Our friend Ken DeCoster is here from the Sheriff's Office and Crime Stoppers. How are you? Riley, I'm doing great. How are you? And nothing to complain about. Another Caruana stopped in here. Not the sheriff, but our pal Tony, the travel guy. Are they cousins? cousins yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, there's got to be some sort of family tie in there. Uh -huh. By the way, it keeps Tony from getting arrested. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it, it was just nice to, to, you know, to see a Caruana walk in here who, you know, wasn't demanding the paperwork that you have in front of you there, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to book you on a nice trip someplace. I, and I'd love to take one. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you got... Uh, you got everything going, you got everything under control. You realize Mother's Day's coming up this weekend. I do realize that. I heard a member of our, our building staff this morning go, oh, crap, that's this Sunday? Like, okay. Nice that attitude. Be, <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, crap. That's Mother's <laughs> Day is uh, on the horizon. <laughs> no, I had a good <laughs> laugh at that. Oh, so your mom will be getting a uh, what? A uh, card <laughs> that you, you made in the car on the way there? Right. <laughs> okay. On the way. Love you, Mom. Oh, I hit a yeah. pothole. It yeah. looks like Mob. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> put a lot of thought into this. Yes, on I do. the way here, Mom. Right. Every stoplight, I yes. put something new and sweet on that <laughs> card for you. So I hope you really appreciate that. But uh, anyway, you got it all covered? Uh, we do. We're going to have a nice, quiet uh, celebration at our place on Sunday. Nice. And you? Uh, you know, being that I was telling you off the air, our, our house is still in the middle of a, a massive remodel, and uh, there's, there's just wreckage and destruction and construction everywhere. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. We're going to kind of play that by ear. Is your patience being tried, or are you no. guys adapting? No, absolutely. No, not at all. The mm -hmm. people that are doing the work are, are first rate and explain everything, and there's a schedule, and they're on it. And uh, no, I have no complaints. Uh, I, I, you know, the only thing, my only complaint is when I watch the Fix It shows on HGTV, yeah. they get it all done in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> As I have pointed out to our contractor right. multiple times, they do it in an hour. I don't know what your deal is, but it, you're taking longer than an hour. I love HGTV. I do too. Uh, Christina got me into it, and it's to the point where, I mean, you can only watch so much news Oh yeah, and the the news cycle just drones on and on, and then the 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 talking heads analyze telling what you just heard exactly, and it's it gets just overwhelming and tiresome. So I, I would rather watch people uh, have their homes made over because there's a certain joy yes. to be had, and I, and I read a the breakdown on why it's so after. popular. Right? Yeah, the before and the after. Why it's so popular? And, because you're watching. Dreams come true, too. And, and you dream of, as you and Amy are going through right now, of remaking your own home. Yeah. And, and and getting the joy out of seeing your own home remade. So, yeah, I love HGTV. I do, too. And, it, 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 you know, you can call it uh, somebody well, escapist, but I think it is, in a way. You know, you're forgetting whatever's going on and whatever problems you have. And, you're, you're, you know, your big problem is, oh, can they move that fireplace? Riley, my whole life is escapism. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Or I've heard I don't really pay attention to my own life all that much. You brought a pile of material with you. We should probably get into the law enforcement matters here. Okay, Riley. A, a tragedy this past uh, Sunday. A 20-year-old man named uh, D'Angelo Kimbrough was shot multiple times uh, standing outside of a residence at 18th Street and Alton Avenue. This was Sunday afternoon by 5.35 p.m. Police arrived at the scene to find uh, D'Angelo Kimbrough suffering from several gunshot wounds to his torso. He was taken to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead at 6.05 p.m. Residents told police more than 10 gunshots were fired from a silver four-door vehicle as it drove past the victim, who was standing just to the east of Alton on 18th Street. The vehicle then fled the area. No arrest has been made. It's the city's fifth homicide this year. Anyone with information about this incident is asked to call Rockford Police, 779-500-6555, or you can call Crime Stoppers anonymously, 815-963-7867. Riley, a man was shot while mowing his neighbor's yard Saturday evening. So I think I'm going to use that as an excuse to oh, get out yeah. of the yard. Oh, I, I would love to Honey, use some yard I, I, work. I'm but, afraid I'll be shot. But the neighbors really just don't care for the lawnmower. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, you figure your biggest danger out mowing the lawn is running over bees. Police were called to the 200 block of South Independence Avenue around 7 p.m. Saturday evening in regards to a gunshot victim. When police arrived, they found the male victim had been shot once in his torso area. He was able to walk to his house and call for help and was transported to a local hospital and treated for 
non-life-threatening injuries. Police have no suspect information at this time. And uh, once again, if you have any information, call Rockford Police or Crime Stoppers. Scary story over the weekend, Riley. A woman and her children escaped injury during a home invasion Sunday on the city's northwest side. Shortly after 10.30 a.m. Sunday, police responded to a report of a home invasion in the 1200 block of Sherman Avenue. The resident said she was in the kitchen of her home when she heard the screen door open, followed by a door being kicked in. A man armed with a silver handgun and two other people entered the residence. The woman said she immediately ran into her living room where her kids and nephews were located. The woman told police the gunman ordered everyone onto the floor while the other two intruders started going through the house. A preliminary investigation showed nothing was taken from the residence. The intruders took off in an unknown direction. Anyone with information about this incident is uh, urged to call Rockford Police or Crime Stoppers. Over the past couple of weeks, there has been a rash of uh, home invasions in and around Rockford. Uh, five or six, I think, in the last couple of weeks. So, I, How I know, horrifying could that scenario well, I, be? I know. My Lord. I, 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 I can't imagine, especially... A, room full of kids and you know you, you know your, your first impulse and stuff like that is to flee but you're right. not fleeing when you got a room full of kids right. there to protect and thank god nobody was uh, nobody was hurt right but, uh, just again uh check the security measures in your home always uh, always uh this from the winnebago county sheriff's office riley two men and a 17 year old juvenile were arrested in the uh, sheriff's office uh the sheriff's office says they broke into two cars early yesterday morning uh, police say deputies were called to the 8700 block of Grove Hill Road for a report of a vehicle break-in around 3.15 a.m. Monday. According to police, two vehicles had their windows smashed and a purse was taken from one of the vehicles. During the investigation, one of the deputies says a suspicious vehicle driving through the intersection or through the subdivision was spotted. The deputies spotted or stopped the vehicle and reported finding property that was stolen at the break-ins at Grove Hill Road. So if you're going to be cruising a subdivision at 3.15 in the morning yep. and police spot you, chances are you're going to be pulled over. Oh, yeah, there's a very good chance of that. 21-year-old Joseph Marte of Streamwood, 19-year-old Jesus Mendoza of Rockford, and a 17-year-old male from Streamwood were arrested and charged with burglary to a vehicle and criminal damage to a vehicle. Police are also looking into whether they are there are any links to other recent vehicle burglaries. So we'll continue to follow that. Absolutely. And finally, Riley, we're uh, looking for the following four individuals. 20-year-old Jonathan Baquette, B-A-Q-U-E-T, is a black male, 6 feet tall, 140 pounds. He is wanted for domestic battery. 32-year-old Brandon Eish, is a white male, 6'1", 185. He is wanted for aggravated DUI. 24-year-old Delinda Dismuke is a black female. She's 5'3", 170 pounds. She's wanted for deceptive practices. And finally, 25-year-old Quentin Cobb is a white male, 5'10", 180. He is wanted for theft. If you know the whereabouts of any of these people, give us a call at Rockford Crime Stoppers, 815-963-7867, or call toll-free at 888-769-STOP. You know the drill. We uh, don't have caller ID. We uh, don't ask your name. And we do pay cash rewards of up to $1,000 for information that results in the arrest of a criminal suspect. There's a reason this program has worked so well since 1981 is because of all of those reasons you just mentioned right there. And that and the willingness of the public to help out. And we appreciate it. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, we were talking a little bit ago about the things that have changed since technology, the advent of tech, things you don't do any longer. I heard you and Joe talking yeah, about Yeah, running this. down some of those. Uh, think back to when you and I were in school. There had been no way this could have been pulled off either. Two North Carolina teens are looking at charges after they catfished their French teacher and then shared nude photos of him. Oops. Brian Joshua Anderson, Brittany Renee Luckenbaugh, both 16, charged with misdemeanor disclosure of private images. According to the Onslow County Sheriff's Office, officials said the teens used a fake social media account to contact David Laughinghouse. That's a real name. David Laughing. Is he a comedian? I, you would think that'd be perfect. <laughs> well, maybe he's got time now. A French teacher at Swansboro High School in North Carolina. The teens obtained X-rated photos of the 51-year-old teacher, which they shared with other students at the school, according to a local news station. Oh, boy. Taken into custody last week, released on $5,000 bail each. 
Quote, the investigation remains an active one. We are potentially looking for other incidents of catfishing, said the Sheriff Hans Miller. Wow. <clears throat> First off, I, when I'm you glad. and I were in school, catfishing yeah. was, well, you were fishing for catfish. Yes. Um, nude photos shared somehow. That would have had to have been done with a Polaroid one-step camera. And, right. Hey, don't, don't show anybody this. And literally exchanging uh, right. from person to person. But, uh, yeah, that, uh, that sort of tech. Look what technology has made life so much better. My question is... All right, they're under. They get charges on this one. But what, what about, about him? The, yeah, what about him? What? what, what, what oh, is, he was tricked. How do I get tricked into taking nick, naked photos of myself and sending them to someone? <laughs> oh, tricked! I, uh, I thought it was my doctor wanting to do a, a virtual exam. I, I didn't know. Really? Yeah. What is up with him? I, I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, catfishing, which meant they purported to be a, a female of a, of uh, I guess desirability to this guy and. Mm. Off we went. So, uh, once again, uh, it, technology making all sorts of things possible. <laughs> of course, back in the day, it was, yeah, okay, get a fishing bowl. We're going to go catfishing. And there won't be any nude photos. Ken, good to see you. Thanks for your time.